Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. I've been away for a while, but I'm back and I created a brand new pastel drawing, a big one. So in this clip, you will see the real-time process of creating the stripes on the right zebra. And it's in real time. You can follow the whole project from start to finish over on my website in the Drawing Club membership. So this tutorial turned out to be a 14 hour tutorial, a very long and detailed one. So if you're interested in watching the full process, head over to my website. You will see a link in the description and I hope you'll enjoy it. So I'm glad I'm back and I hope I'll be able to create more videos from now on and I hope you'll enjoy this video. All right, so now we can start moving on with the actual stripes on the head. So it's easiest to start off with the darkest stripes and then fill in the white in between. So uh, again, the, the right side is going to be lit up and the left side is going to be in shadow. So for the stripes on the right side, we have to use a warm undertone. Then for the left side, we can use a cool undertone again, which will give really nice dramatic lighting to the face right away. So for the left side, I'm going to use brown. And for the right side, I'm going to use the 770 color again for the stripe, except for the forehead area, which looks a little bit more warm overall anyway. So let's get started with the brown. 635 is a good starting point and then we have to map out all the stripes which is going to be quite a tricky little work to do so i'm going to look very closely at my sketch lines they're still there but still i have to look very closely so i don't make any mistakes uh, so I'm just going to pick a starting point around the eye. This is going to be white. So this stripe is going to be black. So I'm just going to start out here and then work my way around towards the center of the face. First going to lightly outline the stripes and then fill them in. And this is going to take a while. Then they all come together here at the forehead area where it's all very nice and fluffy looking. And towards the nose, the stripes are getting smaller. And this one actually splits up. And then they all come down into the nose where it's all dark. Coloring that in lightly. And moving on.
I'm using super light pressure here because I do want to add some other colors on top later. Some stripes are looking more grayish. So I do want to have that space to adjust the colors later. not worrying about any of the fur texture yet, so I just want to get these shapes right. Keep looking at the photograph.
And then this center one comes together with this other one. This really takes a lot of concentration. It's good to take a lot of breaks with this one. And sharpen the pencil when you feel like you can't do any tight, solid lines anymore. So toward this side of the face, you can see the white stripes are becoming more blue and the black stripes are also getting more of a dark blue undertone.
I'm not going to connect all the stripes at the top here yet because I want other colors for that. More of the reddish brown tones. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing the tops of the stripes with the brown, but when it gets towards the bottom, I'm going to fill them in with 770. And all the ones on the cheek I'm going to also do with 770. So when you get the hang of the pattern, it makes sense, but the start is a little bit tricky. All right, switching over to 770. And continue the stripes down, these stripes down.
follow the curves of the stripes they will give a lot of shape to the face Okay, so that's a cheek done. <clears throat> and now let's do the other cheek. For that, let's switch over to the brown again, the 635. It actually looks nice already. So because of these shapes, the structure of the, head, of the face is already very visible, which is really nice.
All right, so we're almost done with the black stripes, though I do want a little bit more layering in there before we move on to the white ones. Um, because the black stripes, they are just brown and the paper is not completely filled up yet. So I want to add some other colors with that, fill up the paper, and then when we only need to do the final details on the black stripes, we can do the white stripes and then do the final details on top. So I feel like I want to tone down the brown on the stripes by adding some gray on top. So I would go for a warm gray. Just a cool gray wouldn't really look nice compared um, when combined with the brown. So let's do 708. A dark warm brown especially on the cheek right here on the right you can see that the stripes look more like a very dark gray the brown is a good undertone though but now we can add some other colors still with light pressure but I will thicken the layers to make sure that it fills up the paper a bit more Make sure that the lines stay tight. Make sure your pencil is sharp. And then I'm going to look at the different tones in the stripes. You can see that towards the top of the head, the forehead, you can see more like a reddish hue over the stripes. So there I would maybe switch to another brown to finish the stripes with. And then on the left side, you can see they are just very dark, very black. So we will go with black on top of that. And the center ones, I do see a warm hue in there, so maybe for those I would also go for a brown. So let's leave it for the gray right now and move on to 625. And add it lightly on the center stripes and the top part. And this is still quite light, so we will need to go over with black anyway. But putting these colors underneath will give the stripes more depth. I can look a little bit at the fur texture here because the coat on the forehead is pretty long. You can see the individual hairs there. So what I can do is look at the direction of the hair and draw some little lines with the brown from the stripes into the parts that we have to fill in still. I think these are pretty young zebras. Not foals completely, but somewhere in between foal and adult. Because usually the foals have larger fluff on the ears and more hair on the forehead.
And also here towards the top, I'm going to draw some little hairs from the stripes going towards the forelock area. So here the stripes become very fuzzy, not very tightly outlined anymore. So I'm trying to replicate, uh, replicate that effect. All right, so we're going to refine that later. Maybe put in just a hue of red on the top of the forehead and then we can start filling in the white stripes. Let's do a tad of 655 on the stripes right here, just a little hue, not too much. And let's also do a little bit of 685 because underneath the forelock right here you see a yellowish hue. This part of the forehead is also hit by light a lot, so we have that sunlight effect. Okay, so let's move on to the white stripes now. So this is going to make such a difference and it's going to look really nice. So we have to make sure that the right side is the brightest and then the left side is quite dark. Though this time I don't want to go in with the blue that is so dark as the blue we used on the neck. Because the neck has to be the darkest. So instead I would start with like a cool gray for the left side. So let's start with that. Pick 724, which is a medium cool gray. It has a very blue undertone, which is nice for the shadow areas. Though we do see this little patch of light right here um, above the eye. So I'm going to go around that. So that's the only part that I'm going to skip with this gray. The rest I'm going to fill in lightly. And just a light layer again because we will do some other colors on top of this.
Let's map out the shape of this patch of light. Above the eye, somewhere right there. And I'm going to go fill that in around. It doesn't have to be filled up completely yet. This is just the base. Making sure to not go over the black stripes. I think I missed a little stripe right here. I missed this one. Okay, that's better. So let's see, maybe this one, this one looks a little bluish right here in the center, but the rest is lighter again. So this is it for the cool gray. Maybe here at the top a little bit as well. Okay, so moving on. So let's leave this, do a base layer on the whole section first. So the rest looks more warmish. So let's go for, let's go for the brightest area first. So we have the contrast in, and then we can do the center section. So actually I'm going to move on to white right away because I want high contrast. And I'm going to use the white on the cheek and on the very right side of the forehead. Let's start right here. I'm just going to fill this in quite solidly. We don't see much hair texture here. Not pushing too much though. We can always tone this back down with another color. Going in between the dark stripes carefully.
Okay, so now you can see the difference between the right and the left cheek. It's a pretty high difference right now. It looks a little weird, but we're going to tone that down. All right, so that's it for the white. As we get more towards the left, we get more like a warm tone to the stripes. Maybe here, a little bit of white still. Okay, so let's move on to a slightly less bright color now. Actually, on the left, I also see a pinkish hue. I will get to that later. Let's move on first with, whoops, slightly darker tone. Let's go for 700 and fill in the rest. The warm beige tone. Okay.
Fill that in pretty quickly, I'm not worrying about the fur texture at the top yet. We need to do more glazes of color. For all the areas where you see the fur texture, like here in the center of the forehead, I want to start off a little darker and then eventually draw the hairs on top. And I'm also going to fill in this light patch on the eye. Make sure it has a nice sharp edge. All right, so these are all of the stripes filled up with the base tone. Now we need to do a little bit more color glazing to make it look a bit more interesting. So I do definitely see a bit of a pinkish hue over the stripes, especially on the left cheek. So let's get, let's do a little bit of 681 first and maybe do a brighter pink even if we need it. Let's do this one first, 681. I'm just going to add this on top. The stripes. A little bit on the right side too. Actually for the left side I'm going to pick a darker tone. This is too light for the left side. Okay, so that's it. We need something a bit more heavy now. So let's take 642. And I'm going to glaze that on the left side. Light pressure because this is quite a vibrant color. Just kindly brushing it. I'm also going over the dark stripes a little bit. I don't mind if I cross those lines a little bit So we don't want any blending with our fingers here because it's too small of an area to blend. Otherwise we'll just mix all the stripes together. So I just want to make sure to blend a little bit with the pencils by going over with very light pressure. just a really nice glazing tone overall it works really well on white fur but also on black fur keeping it mainly for the left side but I can go over the center a little bit as well
All right, so now we have a lot more depth in the fur. Maybe hype up the, the yellowish hue as well on the center of the face. So I'm going to get 105 beige tone. I also see that yellow here on the edge of the cheek. A little bit more of the 640. Then we're going to do some more glazes and then we can start filling up the black stripes completely because they're not finished. They need to be a lot darker still. Maybe a little bit of blue on the left side, just a bit of glazing. Let's take 440, 440, and I'm going to glaze it on the white stripes right there. So this is also still an underlayer, so we're going to fill up the paper completely by going over by with a slightly lighter color for the white stripes and a darker color for the black stripes. Just take it slowly. A little bit more 655 red at the top. I can blend the top part a little bit because the coat is very fuzzy here, very soft, so I can do a little bit of blending to recreate that effect. Okay, a little bit of blending at the top. I don't want to get into the white parts that much. All right, so now it's time to darken up. So let's get black. Make sure it's nice and dark. 
Let's start on the left where all the stripes are super dark and fill them up one by one, not adding too much pressure. Okay, so you can see what kind of a difference that makes. Very nice. It's also nice to leave the right side stripes slightly lighter. Keep the pencil very sharp, otherwise the stripes are going to be too thick at the bottom.
doing a little bit of that hairy texture on the forehead following the stripes All right, and the more I get towards the center, the less I'm going, the less I'm going to push because I want the center stripes and the right side stripes to be slightly lighter still. But I do want to darken them up, so I'm going to add a light layer of black instead. And then maybe after that, some extra brown.
right, so that's it for the black. Let's leave it. Let's take brown now instead, 635, and just fill in the top right here with another layer of extra brown. I don't want to add too much black at the top apart. can do a little bit more of the fur texture.
All right, I want to do a little bit more glazing with 685 on the white stripes before we start doing the details on that because I feel like the white stripes are missing some warmth. So just with very light pressure, I'm going to add that. bit more blending at the top All right, so let's do a little bit of detailing on the white stripes. So I'm going to get 722 for the left side. It's a cool gray, but slightly lighter than the one we started with. I'm just going to lighten up again here and there. And then with the uh, gray, I can also add some hairs.
All right, so now I'm going to take white and do a little bit of hair detail on the center of the face. And on the right side, so I can do some hairs overlapping the dark stripes with this. So I just have this little gap here in between the forelock and the ear. I need to put some fur there. The fur there or the coat is quite light. It looks a little bit pinkish. So let's go for, actually let's go for a warm gray as a base tone and then I can glaze some pink on top. So let's go for 706, fill in this gap. The hair goes up a little bit towards the left. Just a light layer of gray to fill this up. And now let's add the pinkish hue by glazing 642 on top. Lightly, so we need a darker under layer and then we can do the light hairs. Okay, so then I feel this is too pink. I need more yellow. So let's glaze. Let's do this 685. So I need to make sure to implement the colors from the background into the zebras to make sure that they fit with the background. So whenever we need a yellow color, I just use this. Glazing that on top and then maybe I feel like I need a bit of orange. So I'm just looking at the photo and Building up as I go. So this is 675. And I'm also going to add that. With light strokes.
taking that orange down a bit. You want the forehead to be really sunlit. And let's see, do I need any darker tones? So actually we do need some more dark. So let's do 625. This is now just a very pinkish bland spot. To create the hair texture, let's do some dark shadows into the fur with 625. Just some lines. And then that's a good base for the light hairs to go. Okay, so let's take some yellow, some 105, sharpen that. And we're going to add some tiny hairs there. And then make them stick out on top of the ear a little bit. So we have a nice transition from the ear into the forehead fur. And then also make some hair stick out on top of the background. Okay, and then I want to focus a little bit more on creating the sunlit effect on the forehead. I see some bright red and bright yellow. So let's take bright red, 305. And I'm going to glaze it, especially on the, the darker stripes, the black stripes. Not too much. I hope you can see that. It's just a small difference. And then I want to take a very bright orange. This one's nice, 221. We're almost using the whole 60 pencil set. Lots of colors into this drawing. Take that orange and pull out some little hairs on the white stripes. This is not the brightest color yet, so this is just to create the real sunlit effect here. We're going to go one shade lighter as well. And then I'm going to take 210, it's a real yellow, and pull out a few hairs with that as well. These are just a few hairs that are really getting hit by the sun. And when I feel the dark stripes are a little bit too light now, I can always go back in with some black and sporadically go 
in between all the hairs we just drew and just do a little bit of black in the dark stripes again, especially right underneath the forelock here where it's very dark. Alright, so that concludes this video for today. I'm very proud of you if you've been able to watch through the whole video. It was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. So I hope you also enjoyed my on-camera debut. I'm going to try to do it more often, but it's very scary for me still. Um, but this is the end result. I hope you like it. If you want to watch the whole process and draw along with me, you can go to my website and join the drawing club membership. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.